Welcome back to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK and I'm excited to be sharing with you a pair of really easy to make crochet tube socks. Now tube socks are a great way to make a pair of crochet socks without having to worry about creating a turned heel. They are literally made by making a rectangle, seaming the rectangle and sewing up the toe. But I think what really makes them special is selecting some super cute yarn. Now this yarn has been kindly gifted to me by Hobby as part of their Socktober campaign. I am really excited to be using this. Now you might be thinking, my goodness, Fiona, that is super fine yarn. And it is actually. It is a one weight and it is called super fine. The good news is that we are going to make this really beginner friendly by doubling up the yarn, working from one skein, both from the middle and the outside to work up these socks. So we're going to create a weight of yarn that's closer to a normal size three DK weight yarn by working from both ends of the same ball. So if you haven't ever used this, I would highly recommend it to create some very unique colours and it's going to be even more unique by holding it double stranded, working from both ends of this ball and the Silly Socks Flower Pop selection. This is a shade number 09 and it works up really beautifully. This yarn is specifically designed to use with socks. So you've got a 75% wool content and a 25% polyamide content. That polyamide is what helps to keep the fabric sock safe. If you know what I'm saying, it means that it makes it a little bit easier to wash. And you can see there that we have a 30 degree machine wash um, that we can use this for as well. Now, depending on which size you are making will depend, of course, how much yarn that you need. I have so far already stitched up one size small and these sizes really don't differ very much. It's all to do with the circumference of the sock that we are making. On the screen, you can see each of the sizes that the pattern has been written for alongside the different sizing, depending where you are in the world. It'll also give you the finished rectangle size and the estimated amount of yarn required based on the Silly Socks yarn that I've used. So now the recommended hook size is a four to a four and a half millimeter. Um, I wouldn't normally use that with something so thin, but we are doubling it up and I have created my socks using a four millimeter hook and it's going to give us quite a solid fabric that's going to keep our tootsies nice and warm. So gather your materials and let's get started. Now, if you're not familiar with working of both ends of the yarn ball, um, you're going to have to take off your yarn band, which you know I never like to do. But in this situation, we're going to have to. And we need to find the middle pull and the outer strand as well. And we're basically going to work holding them together at all times. So there's always going to be the two strands on our hook and we're going to be using them throughout this process. It shouldn't get too twisted up. You can kind of pull forward some of the yarn that you want, but provided you don't have an excessive amount of yarn coming out of the ball, you shouldn't get in too much of a tangled mess. Even though this is quite a furry wall, there is a risk that if you get a knot, it's gonna be quite hard to undo. Don't know how well that fiber shows up on screen, but it's a little bit fibrous and it could get caught up on itself. So we are gonna be running both strands off of this one ball. Before I pull any more off, I'm going to make my slip knot and place that onto my hook, making sure that I've got both loops of colour in my slip knot. I'm going to make sure that I pull out a little bit of yarn, both from the middle of the ball and from the other side, keeping them at similar lengths. And then we are ready to start our beginning chain. Now the stitch that we're using is a chevron stitch, a nice basic chevron stitch, and it does have an easy stitch multiple to adjust. So if you wanted to make your tube socks a little bit longer so that you can fold over and create a deeper cuff, you can just add on some another of the multiple and it will make the sock finished longer. So the stitch multiple is 10 chains plus four, and that's for the stitch pattern. You just do multiples of 10, and then we're gonna add on those extra four chains to make our beginning stitch. Once you've made your slip knot and placed it onto your hook, we are going to begin by making a chain of 63. So we just yarn over and pull through 63 times. 
it's really important that you make sure you're maintaining both loops of both strands on your hook at all times. So it seems like a really long chain, but we have to account for the part of the sock that is used to go over our heel. For the remainder of row one, we're going to start by working into our fourth chain. So remembering this loop doesn't count, we have one, two, three, four. We're going to yarn over the hook and we're gonna be working a UK treble crochet, the same as a US double crochet into that fourth chain from hook. So we yarn over the hook and insert, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Now this skipped chain three at the beginning does count as our first double crochet from the beginning of the row. We are then going to work one double crochet into each of the next three. So we yarn over and insert, yarn over to bring that loop up, pull through two, pull through two. So that was number one. Repeat that into this next chain for number two and repeat that again for number three. So chevrons are made up of peaks and troughs and to create the trough in this chevron we're going to work a double crochet three together the same as a UK treble three together. So we are going to work that over the next three chains and that will cause the chain to kind of go from three into one stitch. We begin by yarning over the hook and inserting into the first chain, yarn over, bring a loop up so you have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through the first two loops and we kind of pause there and we repeat that twice more. So we yarn over, insert into the next stitch or chain, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over, pull through two and stop there once again. So we now have one, two, three loops. We're going to yarn over, insert into the third chain along, yarn over, bring a loop up. We're going to yarn over, just pull through those first two loops. So we now have four loops on our hook. To finish the stitch, we yarn over and pull through all four loops, which is tricky when you do it slowly. And it looks like you've created a bit of a lump, but it will be flat. It's just We've made those three chains into that one at the back there. So that was a double crochet three together. We're then going to work into the next chain along. So you can see there's a hole where we've already worked. So we're going into the next chain and we're working one double crochet into each of the next three. I picked up an extra loop, but yeah. So that's one. Two. Three. So that double crochet three together we did creates the trough, which is why that now looks like it's sticking up in the air. And we're then going to create our peak into our next chain, not here, but where that next empty chain is. And we're going to work three US double crochets into that same chain. So that's one. We reinsert back into the same chain again for number two. Oh, I dropped it. And we're going to reinsert into the same chain for this number two and repeat that for a third time by working a third double crochet into that same chain and that is going to create the top of our chevron or our peak. We're then going to work one double crochet into each of the next three chains so that's one, two, and three and then we are going to work a double crochet three together over the next three chains again so we work we yarn over insert into the first one bring our loop up pull through those first two loops we pause there insert bring our loop up pull through the first two loops again then for a third time we insert bring our loop up pull through the first two loops before we yarn over and pull through all four loops. If you need to get more yarn from your ball, just gently pull. And hopefully it will just freely come off. If it spins around a little bit, don't worry too much. I just don't want mine to fall on the floor. There we are, 
gives me a bit more to work with. So we've established our pattern. We can, <laughs> I know it doesn't feel like it, but we're going to work one double crochet into each of the next three. We're then going to work three double crochets into the next, and then we work one double crochet into the next three before walk, working a three double crochet. Oh no, a double crochet three together. So we begin by working one double crochet into each of the next three. That's one, two, and three. We then need to work our peak, which is where we work. You see how it goes dips there? That means we need to work our peak next. So we're going to work three double crochets all into that next chain. That's number two. And number three. We're then going to work one double crochet into each of the next three once again. Oh, I can find my chain. There we are. So that's one, two, and three. Because we've just worked those three double crochets into that last chain before these last three working a double crochet three together over the next three. So we yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over, pull through two, repeat that again, pull through the first two, and for a third time. Got those four loops, pull through all four. So you're going to repeat this all the way across until you have just three stitches remaining. So continue to repeat that across, working one double crochet into the next three, working three double crochets to create your peak all into the same chain, working one double crochet into the next three before working a double crochet three together over the last three. And that makes your pattern repeat up and it should look nice and wavy like that. So continue across and I'll meet you to work those last few stitches together. So once you have repeated that all the way down and you end with just three chains remaining after your final double crochet three together, we're going to work a half double crochet into each of the next two chains. So we start with yarning over, inserting into the next, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Going to repeat that again into the next chain. So yarn over, bring a loop up. Oops yarn over, pull through all three. And then in our final chain, we're going to work two half double crochets. So that's one. Oh, I'm stuck. There we go. And two. The reason that we are increasing on this last stitch is to create a really neat edge. But the reason we're working smaller stitches is to allow for a for less sewing up on our toe. So at one end, which is going to be our ankle end, we're going to work double crochets. And at the other end, we're going to work half double crochets. And that just helps to bring in our toe. Going into row two, we are going to make a turning chain of one. We're going to turn, but this chain one does not count as a stitch. So we're going to work into that first stitch of the row and we're going to work a half double crochet. So we're going to work a half double crochet into the same stitch as our chain one and then we're going to work a half double crochet into each of the next three. So we yarn over, insert, bring our loop up, so that's number one. Yarn over for number two. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm so used to doing that at a certain angle when I'm sat down and number three. Let me get through. There we are. So you'll see that we have that three double crochet underneath our hook here for our next stitch to work into. But instead of working a double crochet three together, over the next two stitches, we're simply gonna work a double crochet two together. That's to help us not decrease too many stitches. So we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into the top of that double crochet three together from the previous row. 
yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, we yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over, pull through two, and we should have three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. We're then going to start that same pattern repeat we were working along row one, where we start with one double crochet into each of the next three. So that's one, two, and number three. Just as we were doing before, we're going to work into that middle stitch of the peak of the previous row, working those three double crochets. That's one, two, and three. I'm going to just get some more yarn off of this ball here for a moment so we're not pulling on that as we're working. It's good fun, that. <laughs> it's not going to work in a yarn bowl, is it? I probably need one of those fancy yarn genies. So once you've worked those three double crochets, we are, of course, going to work one double crochet into each of the next three. So that's one, two, and three. And we should then be either side of our three double crochet, our double crochet three together from the previous row, because that's worked over the three stitches. We want the stitch before the th double crochet three together from the previous row and the next stitch. So we're yarning over, inserting, pull through two, repeat that again into that next stitch. And again, to create that three double crochet, to create that double crochet three together. We then work one double crochet into each of the next three. And we are back to the top of our peak once again. This is going to really help build upon the peaks of the troughs we've previously created. This side or this end here is for our toes, so it is going to be smaller. And we're going to repeat the same stitch pattern all the way across. We'll end with our double crochet three together. And then I'm going to meet you when you have those four stitches remaining and your turning chain. So continue to work your chevron all the way across. Just check it, I'm working into that middle stitch and I will meet you uh, ready to work those last few stitches together at the end of row two. So once you've worked all the way across to those last remaining four stitches, we are going to work one double crochet into each of the next three. So we yarn over, insert, bring our loop up and pull through two just as normal working that into each of the next three stitches. That brings us to our turning chain, which cannot be forgotten. We need to find that the top of the chain, which is a the churn, which is the third chain. Mine goes lovely and small. I just kind of aim my hook for the middle of it, push it on, and we're working two double crochets into the top of our turning chain. So our stitch count should remain the same, it's just that this time we have half double crochets where our toes are going to go. So going into oh, so going into row three, we begin with a chain of three. Really? That's one, two, and three. Now that chain three does count as our first double crochet of the row, a second double crochet into the same as our chain three. We're then going to work one double crochet into each of the next three. So that's one, two, and three. We're then going to begin our pattern, starting with our double crochet three together. And then of course we can just continue on with our normal pattern repeat for the chevron. So we work one double crochet into each of the next three. And that should bring us up to the middle of the peak 
from our previous row. And that's where we're working those three double crochets. So that's one, two, and three. Oops, <laughs> runaway ball there. We're then going to work one double crochet into each of the next three again. Oops, that's one, two, and three. And that brings us ready to those three stitches to work our double crochet three together to create our trough. Once again, we are going to repeat this pattern all the way across until we end with that, that double crochet three together across those stitches. And you're going to look like you've, well, you're going to have three stitches remaining. And that's where I'm going to meet you. So continue all the way across and I'll meet you for our last three stitches. You just continue on with this beautiful chevron pattern. I'd love to know if you're using this silly socks yarn and loving how the colours are working up by holding them all together because I am super pleased with how jazzy these are turning out without actually having to need to change any colours. Because I'm going to be using them, because these tube socks are effectively slipper socks, I think we can go nice and bold and beautiful with them. Anywho, continue on and I'll meet you for the last three stitches of row three. Once you've worked all the way along for row three and you have those three stitches remaining, we are simply, we have to remember, ah! Once you've worked all the way along to the end of row three, we need to notice that these are the shorter stitches at this end. So this was our ankle, this is our toe section. So we're going to work one half double crochet into each of the next two stitches. So that's one, and two, and then into that final stitch, we're going to work two half double crochets. So that's one and two. And that is our pattern repeat. And we are simply going to be repeating rows two to three to create a rectangle that we are going to seam. We're looking to achieve a rectangle for It'll be easier for me to show you once we've made a bit more of this where to measure it that you have to measure it from kind of the middle of your rectangle there's no point we can measure this end but we can't measure at the toe end because obviously that's a lot narrower than this end which is exactly what we want because that is going to help us not have to create too much bulk at our toes and keep these lovely tube socks nice and comfortable on the screen, you'll find a list of the estimated number of rows, depending on which size you are making. As a general rule of thumb, measuring across the middle of the rectangle is recommended. And just remember to go from peak at the top to trough at the bottom. Don't go from peak to peak because you'll be adding on extra. Obviously, it's hard to see here, but when we seam them, you're going to be seaming a peak to a trough and a trough to a peak. So it'll give us an almost complete circle. We're going to also make sure that we end on a repeat of row two. We're going to end at the top of our sock where our ankles are and where those double crochets, those taller stitches are worked. These smaller stitches for your half double crochets will be a lot more apparent as you progress in your pattern. But if you need to, you can pop a stitch marker where the half double crochets are so that you know that you're working that toe end. So continue on until you've created your rectangle and I will meet you back here ready for seaming and finishing off of our socks. So once you have completed your rectangle and it measures from your top peak down to your bottom trough, you'll really be able to see the difference between your double crochet edge and your kind of toe or your, yeah, your toe edge or your half double crochet edge. And the reason that we've done it like this is so that when we're going to seam this together and we're going to kind of cinch the toe together, it means that we have a nice wide section for our ankle that we can either fold over or we can just leave to kind of ruffle over our ankle. So you should have finished on a repeat of row two and be finished with your double crochet or your ankle edge here. So repeat of row two. 
by working our double crochets in the end. We're going to start just by making, from here we can continue on to seaming and we're going to place our, our edges together. So to start, we're going to make a chain of one. And I am going to turn and fold my sock together. And the reason that I'm doing this is for me, this is the wrong side of my sock and I want my seam to go on the inside. Now, because obviously they're just a tube sock, the way that I'm going to wear my sock is that the seam is gonna run down the side. And obviously I've got my left sock and then I can put the seam on the other sock to, so they don't irritate the sole of my feet. So once you've made your chain one, we're going to work with the beginning chain facing us. So that would be the wrong side. And I'm just gonna slip stitch through both sides to join them together. So we're going to be working through the beginning chain and then we're joining to that first stitch on the other side of our slipper. And we're just pulling through both sides and then slip stitching through the loop on our hook. And again, we're finding the beginning chain and then the next unworked stitch on the other side and just slip stitching together. I'm just going to repeat this all the way down, working through the stitches. But what we need to take care of is where we have those decreases or the three, the double crochet three together, that we are working into the right number of stitches. So you can see that this is creating a slip stitch seam. But when we oh, pull it up a little bit, when we turn our sock the other way out, the seam won't be anywhere near as obvious. So where we have our double crochet three together, we're not going to, we're just going to slip stitch into that and then keep working down into the next stitch. Am I in the same one there? Oh, I can't see through my camera. There we go. Because each row has the same number of stitches. We don't have to worry about working through different stitches. We just have to marry up the stitches as we go down. We just have to make sure we're not working back through a stitch that's already been joined. So we're going to repeat this slip stitch join all the way down to our beginning knot. And then we're going to fasten off with a long tail. So continue slip stitching all the way down and I'll meet you ready to finish off our sock and cinch our toes. So once you have slip stitched both sides of your tube together, you should be all the way back to your toe section. I'm just gonna make a little chain one and then I'm going to make sure that I've got quite a good length of yarn. What's that? Probably about 20 inches. Probably don't need that much, but I always like to be extra safe and we can fasten off. I'm gonna bring that through using my hook. And then we basically have a long tube with one end bigger than the other. So this shorter edge is going to become our toes. Just like we would, excuse me, I don't know if you can hear my dog snoring in the background. She's obviously very chilled out today. Just gonna thread both strands, oh my goodness, onto this very new darning needle, which is unfortunately very tight. Let's try that again. I really hope you can hear it, it's quite hilarious. Wow, why can't I get this to go through? I'm just gonna thread those onto my darning needle and we're just going to be weaving through oops, all the row ends. We have to go through all of them because we don't want any holes. And I'm just weaving through the, I'm just weaving through the row ends Sorry, my wrist is a bit sore. So if I look a bit weird, that's because my wrist is hurting. Oh. Oh, ends, seriously. And we're just gonna weave in and out of all of these row ends all the way around our socks. 
I kind of do a few and then pull through. And you can see that that's going to cinch it up nice and tightly. So just continue around and then we'll be ready to weave in our ends and finish off our sock. So I've woven all the way around, but so that I can tie it really securely, I'm going to turn my sock the right way out. I want all of this to come through, including my needle. So I'm just turning my sock the right side out and then I'm going to really pull nice and tightly. And then to finish this closing on our toe, I'm kind of going to go, this is where I finished off here, and I'm going to go back through the other side in a bit of a figure of an eight pattern, making sure I work through all the sides of this sock. These won't be visible. You see how they disappear when you pull tightly? Rotate it again and go back through the other way. And it's just gonna help pull in that toe nice and tightly. When you're happy that you have secured all the edges and the ends of your socks, I'm going to just do a knot. I know we're not supposed to do knots, but if you know me, I want to make sure that my projects are very secure. And with that knot there, I'm going to turn my sock the wrong way again. So that is my toe end, very nice, very neat. I'm going to pull my yarn through the wrong way, turn my sock the other way again. Ready to weave in these ends and just secure them again because I want the tail secured on the wrong side. And again, just for good measure. Oh, I split that tail. Now, obviously with toes, oops, I think that was the last one. With toes, of course, you want to make sure there are no loose ends inside. Don't want to get caught around our toes. So I'm going to weave these ends in securely in a moment. But of course, we have to show off how beautiful our sock is going to look. It's such a simple concept that we just make a very nice long tube to put our feet into. I really hope that you've enjoyed making your very own crochet chevron tube socks and that I'm pretty sure everyone in your family will be getting a pair of these for Christmas because they are lovely and soft. Once again, a huge thank you to Hobby for providing the lovely Silly Sock Flower Pops yarn for this video today.